How's everyone doing today? Welcome back to On The Ball. Welcome back to another round of Premier League predictions where me and my brother go head to head in predicting Premier League outcomes. The scores on the doors are 82 to myself, 76 to Sim. And the way the scoring works is five points for a completely correct scoreline, one point for a correct result. And the star man, once you pick them, you can't pick them again for the rest of the season. Uh, five points for a goal, two points for an assist. And let's get into the weekend's action. Starting off at Leicester, it's Leicester against Nottingham Forest. And me and Sim have gone for the exact same scoreline here in 1-1. One, one. Mm. Leicester on the back of two consecutive victories. I think their tails are up a bit. Home game, I think it's a bit, it's a bit of a derby isn't it Forest versus Leicester I think they're both from the Midlands yeah I think it's a bit of a derby so I think well, well they were you're know. right because they were the Leicester fans were very angry that actually um sorry the Forest fans were very angry that Steve Cooper went there ah good point so I think I think it should be a good atmosphere on a Friday night obviously Forest are in blinding form this season I think still unbeaten away from home as well but I kind of feel like the way Leicester set up, I kind of feel like uh, Forrest um, don't like setting up against those kind of teams. I like teams to come out of them. I don't think Leicester under Steve Cooper, that kind of team. So I went for both teams to share the spools here at 1-1. Yeah, I feel like this game could be a bit of a game of chess. I don't think it's going to be the, uh, the greatest game for the neutral. Forrest have uh, drawn their last two away games. Leicester have won their last two games. So I feel like, um, you know, both sides will go into this looking like, feeling like they can win the game and it'll probably cancel each other out. So I've gone for 1-1. One, one. Uh, moving on to Villa against Bournemouth. I have gone for 2-1. Sim has gone for 3-1, both in the favour of Aston Villa. Aston Villa just got a knack of this season of just getting over the line in games. It's going to be a difficult game for them up against a Bournemouth side um, that had a really good result last time out against Arsenal, obviously against the 10-man Arsenal and put in a really strong display. But I feel like like, um, look, Villa as well could come into it a bit tired on the back of uh, Champions League exploits in midweek against Bologna. But I feel like they'll just do enough just to get over the line 2-1. Yeah, and they rested Ollie Watkins in midweek for about yeah. an hour, so that would definitely benefit them. And I think in these kind of games where Bournemouth are leaving a lot of space, I think in the first half it's going to be a bit of a basketball game. I can see both teams going forward and opening each other up, but I think Villa will like that in a way because they know, they know they've got the quality. I know Bournemouth are a massive threat on their day. They're obviously off the back of a really impressive victory against Arsenal. But I think going away at Villa, playing that higher pressing system, asking for a bit of trouble with the quality Villa have. And I don't know if Bournemouth have the quality to keep him out. And I just think um, with Watkins, um, maybe a bit fresh in this one, albeit John Duran scored, so he could start as well. But I'm assuming Watkins is going to start. Um, I just think Villa are going to take it 3-1 here. All right, next up, Brentford against Ipswich. I have gone for a big one in 3-2 to Brentford. Sim's gone for 2-1 to Brentford. Yeah, I've gone for yeah a bit of a tighter game. Ipswich, for all their good work for a lot of the season, still winless, lost the last two as well. And poor defeats, 4-1 away at West Ham and 2-0 at home to Everton. And that will set alarm bells ringing a bit. Brentford, um, on the other hand, um, they did do their, their last game to Man United, albeit, you know, first half, they, they were one nil up and they gave it away. Um, at home, they've been very solid, obviously still have a knack of creating early chances. And I feel like um, in this game, the way Brentford set up, so strong from set pieces, so direct, I think they're going to really hurt Ipswich here. And it could be a bit of a drab game maybe at times, uh, but I think Ipswich at this point, your, this is their ninth game of the season. They need to start picking up points. They need wins on the board. Um, so I do see them going for the win, and I think that could uh, really play into Brentford's hand. So 2-1. Yeah, really two poor results um, for uh, Ipswich uh, against uh, Everton and against West Ham, against two teams, um, you know, in the bottom half of the table. And the narrative has uh, switched on Ipswich, hasn't it? Because uh, they were like four or five games unbeaten with a lot of draws in there. Uh, but now with their last two games with coming with defeats, they need to turn it around somehow. And I feel like with Liam Delap in the side there, they're going to come into this, you know, looking at the game where Brentford played against uh, Wolves, who are bottom of the league with one point, but they scored, I think, two or three goals on the day. It's finished 5-2 or 5-3. I can't remember off the top of my head, but there are goals to be had against this Brentford side. Uh, but on the other hand, Brentford, with Wissa back in the side now, and Buemo on, on form, Sade there as well, Damsgaard, they, they've got some really good attacking talent. So I can see Ipswich actually breaking... Brentford open a couple of times, but I think Brentford's quality will just about shine through with uh, Wissa back in the side. So I've gone for 3-2 to Brentford. Next up, Bournemouth, uh, sorry, Brighton against Wolves. Sims gone for nil-nil here, nil-nil. Yeah, nil. bit of an outside-the-box one, but I just got a feeling that Wolves, obviously, bottom of the league, they need some sort of positivity. Even if it's a point in this game, they need to have some sort of something to build on, because at the moment, they're just losing left, right and centre. And you know what? I watched them against uh, City, and they were quite decent. They weren't 
so bad. And they were probably unlucky to lose in the last minute, albeit the week before that, it was a terrible performance away at Brentford where they lost 5-3. But I thought they kind of corrected that a bit. We've already seen uh, Brighton, obviously, da Danny Welbeck is injured in this game and he's in great form. How that impact them, I have to wait and see. I think against a team like Wolves, who are going to play a back five, they're going to play um, you know, three defensive midfielders probably, or sorry, two defensive midfielders, and it's going to be very, very tough to beat for Brighton. I can see them getting a bit frustrated. They've already drawn 0-0 at home to Ipswich. I think Wolves are going to come here and uh, shithouse a bit of a 0-0 here. So, gone for, gone for that. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I'm looking at Wolves, and yeah, they, they might have had a spirited display last time out, but their defence is just really poor at the moment. They're just conceding left, right and centre. And against the Brighton side, with or without Danny Welbeck, they seem rampant at times. They seem to be opening up teams at will and they definitely know where the back of the net is. They've got players like Rutter and Minte and uh, Evan Ferguson coming back in now who, you know what, Evan Ferguson, we haven't seen him on good form for a long, long time now. So we need to see him uh, get back on the score sheet. And I feel like he'll, he'll be smelling blood a bit against this Wolves defence bottom of the league one point in it for Wolves so far and I can see them fighting here at the Amex but with the home ground behind them with the attacking talent that they do have with the tactics that they deploy I can't see anything but a Brighton win so I've gone for 3-1 to Brighton a lot of Wolves here and is O'Neill gone? I don't know if he's gone but he's un he's coming under increasing increasing pressure um I don't know if they'll sack him for, for losing away to Brighton, but I think maybe when the easier games or, you know, the teams that are in and around them start to come round and, and they start losing them, then I feel like he'll be gone. I guess the gap at the moment, even if they lose, they're still only three points behind seven teams. So as long as the gap is kind of in sight, maybe they keep him. But if, if, if the 17th place start to pull away a bit, then I think, you know, they might consider their options. Their next two games after this are Palace and Southampton. Those are points. the games. If they lose those two. Yeah, gone. those are the games. Uh, it could be like whoever loses the next game gets sacked Crystal Palace against mm -hmm. uh, Wolves. Yeah, it could be. Um, Manchester City against Southampton. Sim has gone for 5-1 to City. I've gone for 4-1 to City. And look, I mean, Southampton are just like... Um, <laughs> they're just partying every every week every week they're just like yeah you score against us you score against us we'll give you three goals we'll give you four goals and against the Man Manchester City side who are not exactly on uh, the best form of their lives at the moment but against I, I call Southampton probably the worst defensive team in the league um, and you don't want to face an Erling Haaland when you're the worst defensive side in the league so Look, I don't think anyone can can back against a, a massive Man City victory. Yeah, the problem Southampton have is they play a certain way, right? Out the back, possession based. Um, Russell Martin is stuck to his principles, and the the problem for him in this game is if he go, if he changes it up for this game, are they good enough defensively at that side of the game to you know keep Man City out? And if they go open in the way they know how to play. Are they just going to get absolutely torn open? So either way, I, I kind of see Southampton really, really struggling here. So I think Man City are going to be licking their lips at this prospect. Um, scored a lot of goals in midweek as well. Harlem were unbelievable. Back oh, hill yeah. volley, one of the best. And Foden looks in good form as well. So I went for 5-1. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to back against anything but a Man City drubbing uh, this week. And having said that, it'll probably be like Man City will score the winner in the last <laughs> second, won't they? Probably. Um, Ever fair, they gave Arsenal a tough game. Yeah, they did. Um, but Arsenal is that. Yeah, look. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Everton, Fulham up next. Sims gone for 2-1 to Fulham. I've gone for 1-1 here. I think Everton at home, they're starting to gather again a bit of momentum in this season, getting some good results behind them against a the Fulham side as well, who have started the season really well under Marco Silva. I couldn't really split the sides. I think Everton will be resolute. Fulham will be asking the majority of the questions, but I feel they'll cancel each other out 1-1. Yeah, I've gone for a 2 on win to Fulham because I think Fulham are actually playing really well this season. They did have a poor loss to, at home to Villa last time out, but albeit in the context of that game, if Pereira win, win, puts that penalty away and they go 2-1 up, it's a different game. And I thought they were playing really well at that moment. I've seen them go away at City, put in a really good performance, and uh, they lost, but again, could have got points out of that game. And I know Everton are in good form. They're always tough to beat at Goodison. But I think it's one of these games where Everton might feel like they should be winning, and I feel like Fulham might capitalise on that. And I feel Jimenez is in brilliant form. Uh, Dharma's playing really well as well. So I've just gone for Fulham to sneaker here, 2-1. All right, let's move on to Chelsea. A big game at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea against Newcastle. I've gone for 2-1 to Chelsea. Sim's gone for 2-2 two -two here. Yeah, I've gone for 2-2. Two -two. Newcastle, I feel like maybe that result against Brighton might be a bit of an idea for them. Like, I feel like it might be a bit of a turning point because... 
that result sorry, against Brighton last week where they lost 1-0. Really disappointing. And after what was a really positive start results-wise to the season, they're now winless in four. Um, some really poor performances in there as well, albeit they did draw at home to City 1-1, um, which was a good performance. But, but after, um, other than that, 0-0 against Everton, 1-0 loss to Brighton, 3-1 lost um, away at Fulham as well. So I think they'll need to change things up. And I feel like in this game, they might do that. I also feel like a Chelsea um, team, who, the way they like to play might suit Newcastle, albeit they did lose to Brighton last week. But if you watch that game, they did have a number of chances which they should have taken more advantage of. And Isaac hasn't quite got going yet. Gordon hasn't quite got going yet. Um, so I feel like they're going to go to the bridge um, and take a point. But obviously Chelsea... They're in great, they're in really good form. We'll be at winless in two, but they are they 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 are playing well, creating chances. Currently, as we're filming, there four one up against uh, Panathinaikos away. They got such talent, so I feel like they will um, be able to hurt Newcastle. But I've gone for Newcastle to go there and get a point. Yeah, I've gone for Chelsea to win two one. Um, I'm really, uh, I really like the, the the way Maresca sets them up. I think uh, they seem to have a bit of unity about them, which you haven't seen uh, with the Chelsea team for quite a while now. And uh, Newcastle, on the other hand, yeah, they've got quite a few results this season, but I haven't been convinced with them uh, pretty much all season. And I feel like um, Chelsea at home at the Bridge will be putting them under a lot of pressure in this game. And I think they'll, I think it'll be a tight game, but I think Chelsea would just about get the three points over the line, particularly. As they haven't got three points over the line in the last two games. So, um, like I said, tight game, but Chelsea are going to take the points 2-1. Crystal Palace against Tottenham. Sim's gone for 2-1 to Tottenham. I've gone for 3-1. Uh, Spurs playing well at the moment. Obviously, I think we've won six out of our last seven games in all competitions. Europa League tonight, hopefully to make it seven wins in our last eight. A Crystal Palace side who just can't buy a win at the moment. Oli Glasner is in increasing pressure. You're already, you're already hearing the noises in the press about man, new managers that they're sounding out and all that kind of stuff. And when that usually happens, the writing is usually on the wall. So they need a big performance in this game um, to save his future. But I can't see it. I, I, I can just see Spurs absolutely running rampant um, at Selhurst Park. I, I can see us conceding, but I think uh, we got more than enough to score uh, quite a few goals in this one. So 3-1. I'm a bit worried about this game, actually, to be honest, because... Palace are a better team than they're showing. They're a better team than the results are showing and they got a better squad than what the results are showing. And they also play us away, which is kind of, you know, with their back five system, he might change up in this game because their back five hasn't quite been working this season. But the way that, it, that they do set up is a quite an effective way of combating a team like Spurs. And that and that is a bit of a worry for me, especially if they're coming to try and claim a point. To they, if they're coming into this game to frustrate Spurs, I'm a bit worried about it. And they've got Eze and quality forward players who, you know, if you give them space, that is a bit of a concern. Having said that, the fact that they are winless in eight, in a weird way, might might play into Tottenham's hands because yes, you could argue they're going to be have that extra motivation to get to. Uh, uh, in this to try and get points, but in a way, because they're winless in eight, I don't know if a draw saves Glasner too much because all of a sudden that becomes winless in nine, and then the, the narrative follows that they're still winless this season. I think he needs wins, I think he needs to get three points, and I don't think a draw in this game is enough to keep the Wolves from the door. In a way, I don't think he's gonna get sacked if he draws, I don't think I don't even think if he loses, he'll get sacked, but I just feel like. A not a non-win again carries on that run of a wet winless run. So I feel like he really needs a win here, and he's going to go for the win. And that could play into Spurs' hands a bit if they if they leave a bit too much space. So I've gone for Tom to sneak it, but I actually were a bit worried. I think Palace are going to be a tough nut to crack here. If you think uh, he's going to go for the win and leave us the gaps, then then why such a close game? Because I think the way they play back five is not going to, there's not going to be that that many gaps to expose. But he's going to leave more than he would have if if it was if they were a good team in form. I think it'd be. I reckon I'll probably predict a draw here, but because wow. they're because they're winless, I think they're going to open up a tiny bit more and leave and leave a bit for us. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm going for two one. I think just Spurs are going to smell blood, blood this weekend, and I think it's going to be a, a nice, convincing win for Spurs. Um, let's go to West Ham against Manchester United. Sim has gone for two one to West Ham. Yeah, Lopetegui needs the win here, and I think Man United are playing tonight, and they're playing pretty much. I've seen their team a full strength team, um, or you know, very strong team. So they're going to come into this West Ham game maybe a bit leggy, on, having played on Thursday night. Very important game. They win tonight as Is well. Is Matt Ryan the ten? 
Well, he's <laughs> that's what some people are saying, which are maybe it's his audition. Um, obviously, Bruno's not in, in the team tonight because he got sent off against um, yeah, Porto. Porto, so he's fresh for the weekend. But um, West Ham, uh, sorry, Man United, massive game for them tonight because they need a win. They're winless in Europe so far, so they need a win tonight. So they're going to put a lot of energy into this game. I think West Ham could take advantage of that. Yes, Kudus is missing, but... It's a map which is a massive miss, but they do have Somerville coming in, and you know people have slept on Somerville because he hasn't done it enough this season. But let's be honest, he hasn't really got too many chances, hasn't started too many games. So I think this is a big opportunity for him to stake a claim in that West Ham team. Really good player, brilliant in the championship, and I think Lopetegui in these kind of games, I've got a feeling he can pull out the bag. I've got a feeling he can get the win here. So I've gone for a two-one win to West Ham. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just not convinced about West Ham at the moment. All didn't seem right on the weekend against Tottenham, albeit they did start the game uh, fairly well in the first half. They were fairly impressive. So maybe um, against this Manchester United side who, look, they've been getting a couple of results um, this season, but they just have looked really poor uh, throughout the season so far. And I think it's just two sides really low on confidence going at each other. And I think West Ham will fancy their chances. United will fancy their chances. Maybe a few tired legs in there from Man United as well. But I think uh, there'll be goals all round. So I've gone for 2-2 in this game. And finally, the game of the weekend that everyone's looking forward to is Arsenal against Liverpool. Both of us gone for draws here. Sim has gone for 2-2. I have gone for 1-1. I feel... I feel the way Arsenal are going to play this, they're just going to sit in really deep, invite Liverpool onto them and, and try and soak up the pressure and maybe hit them um, at the other end of the pitch. But they've got problems going into this. Uh, Calafiori uh, looks like he's out. Timber looks like he's out. So I'm not sure if, if Zinchenko plays. I, I think uh, Arsenal could... Um, that could be the weakness in the Arsenal back line. But however, I think the way Arteta will set them up is just to sit very deep, um, protect Zinchenko. And I think they'll do that with some sort of success. But I think it will obviously hurt their forward line and their attacking line. So I see a bit of a dull game here, to be honest. I think Liverpool will uh, probably, you know, control the possession. But I can't really pick a winner. A winner. So, yeah, I've gone for 2-2. I think, um, obviously, Arsenal missing some key players. Saliba, uh, big misses for them. Obviously, Calafiori's injured. So, their back line is a bit um, decimated. Obviously, Saka, we'll have to wait and see if he's fit. There's rumours that he'll make it, but I'll have to wait and see what Arteta says. Um, I think those will be misses, but and I think they'll be misses which mean that Liverpool can kind of uh, get more out of their attacking game than maybe they would have. But, uh, you know, Arteta said on the weekend that Arsenal are going to come out flying, and I and I and I kind of think like he's going to get a really big performance out of them. So Liverpool, obviously, on the run, on a run of only one defeat so far this season, playing really well, currently top of the league. So they're coming into this game top of the league. Obviously, Arsenal coming into this game as one of the favourites for the league. So um, I think it's going to be a really entertaining game. Actually, I think both teams uh, are, are going to go toe to toe here, and. I just think I think Arsenal will suffer for those defensive misses. Otherwise, I probably would have gone for an Arsenal win. So I'm going for 2-2. And the star man is a Manchester City head-to-head. -head. Sim is uh, going for Phil Foden. He's risking, he's risking it massively because Foden did score. start in midweek. And he, so. he scored in the first minute. So I'm thinking... But he also started in the, the midweek before that, didn't he? In, the champ in his last Champions League game. Um, and then didn't start in the Premier League the week after. Yeah, but he's been feeling his way into the season. We're now in October. It's time for him to get some starts. And he's never going to not. He's not going to just continue to not start in the Prem. So I'm going to back him to start this weekend and to score. Pep has got a previous of maybe choosing one player that's really important to them to to kind of rest for like the first half of the season and second half of the season just let him explode. Oh. And I feel like that's what he's doing with Foden this year. I don't feel like Foden's going to start. I've gone for Erling Haaland. I think he's an absolute cert, dead cert to start this game. He's hasn't scored in his last three games. So Southampton are very open at the back. I had to pick that. I think this is the game. If you're going to pick Haaland, I think this is the game to do it in Southampton at home. And I'm feeling it could be a nice little hat trick this weekend. Uh, well, hopefully a hat-trick off the back of three assists and two goals for Foden. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, there you have it. That is Predict the Prem this week. Let me know your predictions in the comments section below. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.